I, I wondered if I made a mistake, if there's more than three in VU, but I only put three in the, uh, in the order. I don't know. Welcome to church this morning. It's good that you're here. Uh, normally, if things had gone as planned, I would have been here and said hello to all of you before we started. Um, suffice to say that uh, having um, two kids under five and two parents working full-time jobs uh, introduces chaos. Um, and so uh, I had to breeze in here uh, at, uh, at five minutes to... Uh, no matter what brought you here today, whether you uh, come carrying deep burdens of grief or pain or fear or anger or shame, it's good that you're here. Whether you are here for the first time or for the hundredth time or the thousandth time, it's good that you're here. No matter who you have been, where you have come from, who you love, what you've done, there is a place for you here. Uh, a couple of notes about some things up here on the, uh, on the platform here. We have our big questions box. This is for what we're doing in worship uh, in October and November. Uh, we'd like to know what your big questions are about uh, faith and uh, the church and the Bible. Um, if you don't know, if you don't give us any, <laughs> then we're just going to have to answer our own questions. Uh, and here are peace candle packages. Um, if you are someone from this congregation who's going to be traveling to another congregation and you know that you'll be doing that, uh, or if you're visiting here from another congregation that you're going home to, or if you just uh, want to enjoy uh, having uh, the peace candle tradition in, in whatever way seems right to you, uh, they're here for the taking. Today is a uh, service of Holy Communion in the community contact. You're invited to bring elements for yourself because we still aren't passing things out um, in the sanctuary. That may change soon. I, I, I can't say for sure. Um, if you haven't brought anything, there are some uh, single-serving uh, communion um, packets right here. And uh, if you just um, get someone's attention at some point or come up and grab one when it seems appropriate, um, they're here for the taking. You who are at home, if you're watching either live or, or a recording, um, you can participate in communion with whatever you have on hand. That might be, uh, normally it's done with bread and either wine or grape juice, but you might have crackers or cookies or granola or a donut. You might have uh, tea or apple juice or uh, uh, water or something else. Uh, if you choose to participate in communion later in the service, I invite you to have those things ready in advance. And now uh, we'll just have a moment of uh, silent contemplation as Alice comes forward and lights the Christ candle for us. It says Dora on the screen. Dora wasn't able to be here today, so I'm filling in. Uh, no matter where we gather in this continent that we call Turtle Island, we are gathering on the traditional territory of indigenous peoples. And uh, it falls on people like me, settler people, to take responsibility for uh, the broken relationships between settler culture and indigenous culture. Before uh, anyone like me came to this place, that we call Calgary in English and Mokinsis in uh, Blackfoot, there were people here who had fully developed systems of culture and spirituality and economics and politics. And uh, we acknowledge that history and the deep knowledge and understanding and responsibility that comes with being people who have been here from the beginning. Uh, and so we acknowledge our neighbors in the Treaty 7 First Nations, 
Kainai Pekani and Siksika of the Blackfoot Confederacy, Wesley Bearspaw and Chiniki of the Stony Nakoda, and uh, Sutina, and also Métis Nation of Alberta. We all have work to do in uh, becoming uh, a whole and reconciled people. And now uh, we're going to do our, um, the, uh, the psalm, with the responsive psalm with the refrain from Voices United. I don't know how long it's been since that's been done around here, but we're doing psalms. We're focusing on psalms of creation this season. And so the sung portion is going to be on the screen in green. Uh, if you'd like to look in Voices United, if their Voices United are in the hymns, it's on page 751. And um, we will hear the tune of the refrain played through once and, uh, and hear the uh, and sing the refrain through once and then go into the spoken part. And we didn't get a handheld mic up here. So you got it figured out? Okay. Um, so Karen and Linda and Dan. the spoken responses in yellow. The earth is God's and all that is in it, the world and those who live upon it. For God founded it upon the seas, planted it firm over the waters beneath. of God, who may stand in God's holy place, those who have clean hands and a pure heart, who have not set their minds on deceit, nor made false promises. They shall receive God's blessing, righteousness from the God who will save them. Such are those who seek God, who seek the face of the God of Jacob. you gates. Lift yourselves up, you everlasting doors, that the one who rules in glory may enter. Who rules in glory? It is God, valiant and strong, God who is mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, you gates. Lift yourselves up, you everlasting doors, that the one who rules in glory may enter. Who rules in glory? It is God of hosts, God who rules in glory. My kids were going to be here this morning, and then chaos happened, and so we don't have any kids again. Uh, but I want to talk about, there's a line in the creed. When we do our uh, statement of faith, our, our, our common statement of faith, there's a line that goes, uh, it, it starts with, we are called, and then there's some other things, and it says, we are called to live with respect in creation. Do you remember hearing that line before or saying it? when we, when we uh, sometimes use our, our, our creed in worship. Uh, often I'll include it when we're doing um, uh, baptism or, or, uh, or confirmation or things like that. And I, so I want to talk about that line because this time of year is when we talk about the relationship of God with the created world and our relationship with the created world. So um, I wonder, I wonder uh, if, um, 
anyone can tell me what it means to live in creation? Does anyone have a thought or an idea about what it is to live in creation? People in the, in the, bal- in the choir, I can't see your hands if you're raising them, so you have to just call out. Okay, so being outside, enjoying the beauty outside. Yeah, thanks, Linda. Any other thoughts about what it means to to live in creation? Right. So living in a living in a creative space where we are contributing something of beauty. Thank you, uh, um, Katie. Uh, I, have a, I had a classmate at VST named Dixie Black, and so that's where my head was going. I... Anything else? What it might mean to live in creation? Having plants inside your living room. That sounded like Alice. <laughs> yeah, so... so making sure that when we are indoors, we have some of that, uh, that, that life um, inside with us. Both my spouse and I are terrible at that. We don't have a lot of, uh, a lot of green life inside our house. Um, we have some, ba- some bamboo which has, which has survived for years despite the odds. Well, I think living in creation might also mean that we are called to not try to cut ourselves off or think of ourselves as being separate from the rest of everything that God made. That when God made everything, God made plants and fish and animals and uh, um, the mountains and the skies, and God made human beings, and, and they aren't separate things, human beings and the rest of what God made. We live in creation as, as part of it. And we shouldn't let our heads get the idea that we're somehow separate or outside of or different from the rest of it. One more thing I wonder. I wonder what it means to live with respect. Anyone have any thoughts about what it means to live with respect? Nobody? Linda, it's a new question, so you get another turn. <laughs> Kindness, kindness and faith. Yeah, that's a, good, that's a good answer. Any other thoughts about what it means to live with respect? I don't know what they're giggling about back there. I hope it's not me. Acknowledgement? Acknowledgement? Yeah, thanks, Sam. Living with respect is acknowledging, um, acknowledging that other living things uh, have their own, um, their own life, right? That, that they aren't just there for us. They have, uh, they have life and integrity of their own. So if we live with respect in creation, or if we are called, if we are called to live with respect in creation. Then that means that when we see uh, a a bug, an insect, or a spider, or we see a plant, or we see a person, or an animal, or a fish, or a river, or the sky, or a stone, 
we acknowledge that that thing that God created has its own relationship with God, its own integrity as a thing in creation. And we treat it with kindness, and we keep faith with it. And we remember that we aren't separate from all the life that goes on around us. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, and I, well, if we had children, we would send them away and, uh, and we would enjoy our, uh, to their program, send them away to their program. And, uh, and then um, we're going to enjoy the uh, choir. Peace emerges where justice exists, where those who have much do not have too much and those who have little do not have too little. And those uh, who are vulnerable are supported and where all can participate in the goodness of life. As we light this peace candle, we join together with congregations around the world who follow the same tradition and uh, we commit ourselves to seek this kind of peace for all. We come to worship not to see or hear, but to be seen and heard by God, not to help ourselves, but to seek God's help and be helpful in turn. Let us open our hearts to the saving and renewing presence of the one who is always ready to listen. Let us pray. God of wisdom and harmony, we gather with hopes and with burdens. We are thankful for so much, yet too often we take more than we need. 
We are aware of the pain we cause, but too often we are afraid to change. Make us anew as you made us in the beginning. Send a new sunrise to inspire and inform us for the future. Pour out your spirit of insight and faith on us and on all our communities, that we might be faithful members of your good earth. It's an ancient tradition of the church to uh, greet one another with peace whenever we meet. Uh, that can be done with a, a handshake or a wave or an elbow bump or a, a nod of the head or whatever other symbol of peace uh, you feel comfortable uh, sharing with one another. Let's uh, turn and greet one another with peace. May the peace of Christ be with you.
Good morning. This morning we're reading Psalm 24. There it is up there. The earth is the Holy Ones and everything in it, the world and its inhabitants too. Because God is the one who established it on the seas, God set it firmly on the waters. Who can ascend the mountain of the Holy One? Who can stand in the holy sanctuary? Only the one whose hands and heart have been cleansed. The one who hasn't deceived. The one who hasn't pledged falsely. That kind of person receives blessings from the Holy One and righteousness from the God who saves. And that's how things are with all those who seek the holy face, who seek the face of Jacob's God. Mighty gates, lift up your heads. Ancient doors, rise up high, so the glorious ruler can enter. Who is this glorious ruler? The Holy One, with strength and courage. The Holy One, strong to succeed. Mighty gates, lift up your heads. Ancient doors, rise high so the glorious ruler can enter. Who is this glorious ruler? The God of divine multitudes. This is the glorious ruler. And the response? The trustworthy witness of God's faithful people. The divine word for us today. Amen. There's a certain type of psalm that if you were to read the book of Psalms through from 1 to 150, you'd see a certain repetition of words like these about, um, about uh, opening the gates. lifting up the doors, welcoming God. Because the Psalms were, many of them, used in uh, ceremonial worship, acting out, and when I say acting out, I don't mean any disrespect, I mean the way we act out communion, the way we act out um, um, all of our worship rituals, acting out the um, entering into the city of uh, a victorious king. Either returning home from war with victory, or in other parts of, uh, of our history, perhaps a conquering king whose capital is elsewhere and is coming to uh, impose himself on the cities within his realm. It can be very hard to tell in the Psalms which part of that history they're from. Is it from the part of their history where their temple is in the capital city with a palace and a king? Or is the Psalm from the time when their temple is in a city that is ruled from afar by an imperial conqueror? Because in both cases, you lift up the gates and you welcome in the king. Which is why it's significant that in this piece of worship that we call Psalm 24, this 
bit of the ritual life of ancient Israel, even though we don't know exactly what time maybe it's from. Some people will say they're confident it's from this time, others from another time. But regardless, it is significant that it says, the king is God. The God of Jacob, the God of uh, Abraham and Sarah, the God of Isaac and Rebekah, not whichever human being happens to be entering the city at any given time. Because we like to put that significance on human beings, whether we are gathering that significance to ourselves or whether we are uh, uh, imbuing someone else with it. We like to imagine that human beings are strong to save. The news this week is difficult to engage with. The death of Queen Elizabeth, which has been coming for uh, a year or more, as they announced from the palace uh, that uh, she has entered a new phase of her life. That was the wording. They announced from the palace that she would be making no further public appearances. They announced from the palace that uh, she was ill. They prepared us for, for about a year for the fact that this was coming. And the outpouring of both praise and warm remembrance and the outpouring of frustration and and anger from people who during the 70 years of that queen's reign saw the British power failing to help them when it could. Irish, Scottish, indigenous people in Canada and Australia and the Caribbean. And there is this tension because some of us still remember, not me, but some of us remember when she got on the radio as a teenage girl and helped people stay strong during the Battle of Britain and during uh, the war in Europe. Some people remember the times of uncertainty when she served as a symbol of stability and, and, and confidence, when it seemed like the world might fly apart. And so all a person standing in my position can really say is that it's complicated. And the news of uh, 12 violent deaths in Saskatchewan on the James Smith Cree Nation and, 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 uh, and the aftermath Which may also, uh, um, which may never be fully explained because everyone who was directly involved is now gone.
but that it, it is certain. It cannot be disputed that that violence is an expression of generational suffering, of a similar kind of frustration and anger. Misdirected, very wrongly expressed, evilly expressed, but the same frustration and anger. Started by the imperial powers carving up North America. And it's why the psalm This type of psalm is profound for me. It starts by saying, listen here. The earth does not belong to the powers that exist within it. If any emperor or king or queen claims that they rule the world, or that the earth belongs to them or any part of it, or that they are able to establish justice or righteousness, through the use of power. We can hear, if we choose, the words of a psalm like this. The earth is God's and everything in it because God is the one who, in the poetic language of the psalms, set the dry land into the waters. Nothing that any human being could do. In the poetic language of of our scripture, God is the one who set the limits of the sea. God is the one who established the sky and the sun. God is the one who did things that no human power can hope to do. All we can do, as we have learned in the last couple of centuries, is destroy what God has made. When someone comes into your city or into your country or into your home through radio or television or the internet, The psalm reminds us that we are mistaken to imbue into that person the power to save or the power to create or the power truly to do anything other than humans As human beings, we are not called to to, to save the world. We are called to love one another. As humans, we are not called to remake the world. We are called to live in God's world as part of it, as responsible citizens.
As human beings, we are not called to decide who is worthy, who is not. That privilege belongs to God. So it doesn't matter whether this psalm comes from a time in the history of Israel when they had a king of their own descended from King David who lived in the palace in Jerusalem. It doesn't matter if it comes from a time when they had no king of their own, no palace in Jerusalem, and they were ruled from afar by an imperial power. Because when they gathered to worship, they remembered that for all their wealth and all their influence and all their strength, a human being is a human being. Now, some emperors in the, open wor- or in the, in the ancient world, uh, they, they, they liked a certain thing. It, it, it's, a, it's a fancy Greek technical word. I'll teach it to you. You don't need to remember. It's not going to be on the test, but some people are interested in these things. Apotheosis. Apotheosis. It means a human being being elevated to the status of a god. The Egyptian pharaohs were considered living gods. The emperor uh, Augustine, Augustus, pardon me, uh, after the time of the Old Testament, was considered a living god. There were other ancient cultures and empires who treated their ruler as a living god through apotheosis, through elevation to god status. And the Hebrews knew this. The ancient Israelites, the Hebrew-speaking people, they knew. They knew about Egypt and their, their, pharaoh, their go- pharaohs who were gods. They knew about other empires whose rulers had god status. And they said, we do not elevate human beings. We have a king. He is mighty. He is wealthy, he is influential, and he is human. When we open up the gates of our hearts, when we open up the doors of our faith, when we put our trust in someone to save, someone to transform, someone to redeem, to reconcile, it is God the Holy One who made heaven and earth. There's a third reaction to the death of Queen Elizabeth. Beyond honoring her and grieving her, or anger and frustration, there are people who say it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because she is an empty symbol. I didn't know her, I didn't meet her, And her symbol, the symbol that she represents, means nothing to me. So why? Would I react? But we must always be careful. Because it is not crowns and thrones necessarily that we invest this significance in anymore. It might be in the number of billions of dollars controlled by an individual. Or it might be uh, the number of votes controlled by an individual. Or it might be a vision of popular uh, uprising. 
that we invest in a person. So we gather. We gather to worship, regardless of who is coming through the gates of our city, regardless of where they have come from, why they are here, what they have done or not done. Whether they are the wealthiest person in the world or uh, the fanciest person in the world or they have a crown and a throne. And we say, we open up the gates of our faith. We open up the trust of our hearts to no human being. We treat all human beings to the best of our ability with kindness and compassion. We respect the integrity of what God has made and we put our faith, our faith to save, our faith to transform, to reconcile and redeem in only the Holy One who is responsible for all that we see. May it always be so. Our hymn is Bread of Life, Feed My Soul as we prepare ourselves for uh, um, communion. Um, while we're singing, if you want an individual uh, um, serving of communion and haven't gotten one yet, please come and get one or wave your hand and ask someone to get one for you. And let's uh, stand as our bodies and spirits will allow to sing together. Just two really quick announcements because it's getting late. Um, Caitlin's brain tumor surgery was supposed to take place on Friday, but due to circumstances beyond anyone's control, it's been postponed to September 27th. So please keep uh, Hazel and Caitlin in your prayers. And we have a board meeting on Tuesday, so hopefully next week someone can bring an update from the board. Uh, and a couple of reminders from me. Um, we have a new worship service starting on, uh, on a Friday, I believe it's September 20th, someone, or 
whatever the Friday is around there, it's in community contact. Uh, it's a service of uh, centering and healing. Um, and so uh, I hope you'll consider joining that. And also the drop-in uh, workshops are starting. Um, uh, I'm calling them wayside workshops, and the topic for September is uh, everyday faith. Um, and that's in the lounge and the community there is also on, uh, pardon me, the information for that is also in community contact. And uh, last week we were out of co-op cards, but this week Charlie is uh, in charge of those. So you can uh, speak to him after the service if uh, you have come for that. If you grabbed one of these, I just have a technical, some technical advice. The technical advice is to fold the tab down. And when you fold the tab down, you'll see two separate uh, little tabs, and so you can pull the first one off to get your bread and pull the second one off uh, to get your juice. But if you, don't pull, if you don't tip it down first so that you can see both of them, then you can end up making a big mess, unfortunately. Um, communion is normally done with uh, bread and either wine or grape juice. Here, myself, I have unfermented grape juice and uh, a tortilla from the from the supermarket. Um, where you are, if you're watching online, uh, you can use what you have with you. That might be wine or grape juice, it might be apple juice or tea or uh, hot chocolate or water. You can use um, uh, uh, crackers or cookies or granola, whatever you have. If you're uh, watching online and going to participate, I invite you to have that ready. In the sacrament of communion, the ordinary things of life, water, bread, and wine, point beyond themselves to God and God's love, teaching us to be alert to the sacred in the midst of life. This is not the table of Wild Rose United Church or the United Church of Canada or the Worldwide Church. It is Christ's table, and all are welcome at the table of the Lord. Come, not because you are strong, but because you are weak. Not because you are blessed, but because you are hungry. Come because you know God a little and want to know God more. God is present in the act of communion. We are not alone. Open up your hearts. Let us celebrate God's presence. It is good to celebrate with praise. Let us pray. Loving God, source of all, we praise you with our lips and with our lives that having created all things through your word, you enter into intimate closeness with us. For the goodness of creation and the glory of your redeeming love, we praise you. For your holiness, which calls us to follow you, and your justice, which calls us to repent, we praise you that you have created and are creating, that you have come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, that you work in us and others by the Spirit to create, renew, inspire, that all might be made whole, we praise you. In life and death and life beyond death, you are always with us. We bless you for your Spirit wraps us in your presence, drawing us closer in community. We trust in you. And so it is that at this sacred time we give you praise and thanks for your many gifts, joining with all your people that as one body we may proclaim your praise. Holy, holy, holy God, who has created and is creating, all of creation glows with the light of your love. We trust in you. Blessed is the one who seeks justice and resists evil. We trust in you. On the night of his arrest, Jesus renewed God's covenant promise. He took bread, and having given thanks, he opened it and offered it to those who sat with him and said, take this and eat it. This bread that I break for you is my body. When you share it together, I will be with you. In the same way, at the close of the meal, he poured the cup of blessing, raised it in thanks to God, and passed it among them and said, this cup that I pour out for you is the seal of a new covenant in my blood for the liberation of all people. When you drink it together, I will be with you. Loving God, creative parent, blessing your name, we seek your spirit. Come to us and bless these gifts of bread and wine, fruit of the earth and of our labor, that they may be for us the sacrament of Christ sign and seal of our participation in his ongoing life and our adoption as children of one parent. You call us to be the church, to celebrate your presence, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil. As we eat and drink together, make us one with Christ and with each other, a sign of your eternal reign in all creation. We remember Jesus, who is, who was, and who is to come, we proclaim Jesus, crucified and risen, our judge and our hope. 
Holy God, pour your Spirit on us that we may know Christ in the breaking of bread and that in word and deed we may live with respect in creation, love and serve others, and be channels of your peace. This offering of praise and thanksgiving we make to you, loving God. Through Christ, your word made flesh and in the creative power of your life-giving spirit, now and forever. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. We gather these and all our prayers, thankful that we may turn to you as to a grandmother who watches over us and pray together as Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now let's all hold our piece of bread or substitute ready to partake together. Jesus Christ, the bread of life. Amen. Let's all hold in our hand our juice, wine, or other drink, ready to partake together. Jesus Christ, the cup of blessing. Amen. Please join me in the prayer of communion. Your part is in yellow. Gracious God, may your gifts of love move us to live lives of thankfulness. May your presence among us move us to seek you in other times and places. May your justice, your peace, and your love move us to live with respect in creation. Amen. As an act of faith and trust, we dedicate the first portion of our wealth as a gift for the renewing and reconciling work of God, which we are called to join. Thank you so much for all you have given and will continue to give. Let us worship God with the offering. It's not so unusual that everything is beautiful. It's just another ordinary miracle today the sky knows when it's time to snow don't need to teach a seed to grow it's just another ordinary miracle today life is like a gift they say wrapped up for you every day open up and find a way to give some of your Isn't it remarkable that every time a raindrop falls, it's just another ordinary miracle today. The birds in winter have their fling, but always make it home by spring. It's just another ordinary miracle today. When you wake up every day, don't throw your dreams away hold them close to your heart because we're all a part of the ordinary miracle ordinary miracle do you want to see
God of wisdom and harmony, we return to you this token of what you have given us in the hope that we might share more fully in the unfolding blessings of life in your world. We dedicate our sunrises to you, trusting that you will lead us into each new day by your word, your spirit, and your gentle hand that makes all things new. Amen. Now may the grace of our beloved Jesus Christ be with you and with your spirit today and always, all our relations. Amen.